ever get a problem with the steering wheel. Um, I just, if I do, yeah. I just turn it off, turn it back on. All right. We we are live. It's five o'clock. So welcome everyone to uh, our show, Heralding the Messiah. It's finally, I corrected it, so it is correct now. And uh, we want to welcome you. God bless. Um, and we uh, uh, thank God that nothing uh, crazy went on today uh, during our eclipse. And um, well, as far uh, as we know. As, as far, far as we know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's but, true. We you know, prayed. We've been and, praying that God will put it all off. And, uh, yeah. But, but uh, I did see something amazing today. Everybody's listening now. Uh, just the Lord reminded me when I woke up um, and I checked the news and I saw nothing, uh, nothing like Project Blue Beam being reported. So thank God for that. And then I was praying and the Lord said, uh, uh, remember the first thing in... Uh, in uh, Leave the World Behind, that movie. And uh, so I went back, I didn't remember what it was. I went back and looked at the movie and uh, it was the ships crashing. There was one that showed right on the beach and uh, and it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's the beginning of all the problems. At first everything was fine in the movie. And it's the beginning yeah. of all the problems with the ship crashing. And uh, and then it, and then the policeman says, well, there's been, there's been a, a half a dozen or so crashed which is about the same as the United States, I think about five have crashed into bridges. So basically they're following the scenario of the, uh, of the, uh, and I also saw what's interesting is just before that, there was ab ab actually an opening. I didn't watch the whole movie. I just kind of reviewed the first, uh, one of the movies shortened, but there's actually a point where it looks like an eclipse. It's just in the graphics. You don't, they don't talk about it, but it looks like an eclipse. Uh, three, three, it shows three, it shows the earth, the moon and something sun it's all lining up yeah the, the, the three all lining up and uh, so that picture the eclipse it's just very brief for a few seconds i wish i could show it on the program but uh, uh anyway so the eclipse was the very first thing and then the second thing no or maybe it's the ships first but anyway it, it's it's interesting so they did they didn't comment on it like an eclipse but they showed the graphics or showed the video of an eclipse so just you had just you had to pause it at the right second, which I just happened to do. I'd say the Lord did that to see it. Otherwise, you you wouldn't. You, it's fading from one planet's thing to another planet thing, and you know if you pause it the right second, it looks exactly like mm -hmm. an eclipse. So anyway, uh, I, we're definitely in that time range that they're up to something, and, uh, and those five ships are not coincidence that that's the first disaster in the movie, <laughs> and then multiple disasters thereafter, and. Uh, so weird attacks of all kinds and stuff like that. Um, Sister Doreen said 40 days from the eclipse is where we need to be concerned about. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. But it might be 11 days. But anyway, it's they already started the ship. So the first the first phase of that movie is already underway. The first uh, disasters. Mm -hmm. disasters so. um, there he there yeah. is. What's that? There he is. Uh, I guess oh, too. Uh, there he is. Welcome, Brother John Timothy, Dr. John Timothy. You're a chiropractor, yes. right, Brother John? What's that again? Say it again. You're, you're a chiropractor, right? Am I right? That That is correct. I, I decided at the age of 40 to go back to school and become a chiropractor. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, welcome to the program. Uh, we were just talking about the things happening. I don't know if you heard us or not. Uh, did you hear us talking about there? You, you just tuned in. Oh, um, I don't think talking? Oh, you can't hear me. I can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you is hear us talking about my the, side or anything? Uh, what's that? Is, is the sound okay on my side? Perfect. Yeah, it's fine on your okay. side. How about how about our side? Are we coming through okay? Yep. <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, thanks for joining us, Brother John, uh, Doctor John. We. Uh, we uh, were talking a little bit about the eclipse, and thank God there was no uh, fake blue beam that we know of yet. And uh, and and you know, of course, other things are in motion. The, we were talking about how the ships, four of them, five of them, whatever, ran into bridges around the United States, and that was also the first thing portrayed on the first disaster portrayed on Leave the World Behind, Obama's movie he made about six months ago. It came out about six months ago, 
and there was multiple disasters, but the very first one was uh, the ships running into, you know, losing guidance systems, and then the planes are next on the movie. That's another one. I don't know about next, but anyway, this probably it's going to happen in the same order, almost the same order <laughs> they, put, they put in the movie, you know. So it, it, we're definitely in, a, in it, you know, for the last uh, 1,260 days. Uh, if it, yeah, if it goes until rapture, which it probably does, then uh, then we're we're going to be in it in 11 days. Um, and Sister Doreen already commented, it's 40 days that we need to be concerned about uh, the 40 days from the eclipse that we need to be concerned. I'd say 11 days. Oh, it's already started. The, the disaster's already started with the boat. So, uh, yeah, it just you watch that movie again. It tells you what they're planning. Uh, I don't recommend watching the whole movie. Watch the short version of it. Uh, because, you know, the whole movie is brainwashing. You know, you don't need all that brainwashing, you know. Uh, there's <laughs> subliminal stuff everywhere. And, and, you know, I just always watch the short version. And I watch it at double speed. And then if I see I, something important, then I'll go back. There's a lot of 666 in that movie, too. A lot of it. And not a little bit. And there's an eclipse at the very beginning also. A very, mm -hmm. They don't talk about it. They just show it in passing. They just show three, the earth and the moon and the sun lining up. Uh, just, just very briefly in passing. Uh, and I just noticed that today. The Lord told me to look at it again, and I just noticed that today. So, anyway, interesting stuff. So, Brother John, we're going to let you have the platform. Uh, what's your subject today? Uh, you asked me to talk about my visit down to the Fortitude Ranch. Yes. Yes, so we'll let you go ahead and talk about it if you have any uh pictures. I guess we should have sent them to Sister Maria ahead of time, but uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Well, I, you, the, the the photographs uh, this is kind of interesting well let me, let me tell my uh my visit i guess first and then i'll go into some of kind of my um what i'm what i'm gathering is as far as kind of my suspicions i i don't know uh anyway so my visit well, let, was really kind of, go ahead let me let me get the background because you always get new listeners uh every time so uh uh the background is uh there's places of refuge, uh, communities of refuge, or basically or farms of refuge that we're recommending people get into now while there's still time. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so it, th this is basically Fortitude Ranch. Is, there's seven of them, but there's others we covered, I think. We covered 10 or 11 others uh, also. So, and uh, yeah, and then of course, Argentina is a safer place than the United States. So also, it'll be one of the safer places for for people to go to. And um, anyway, so that's, that's 12 if you count Argentina yeah. as one. And there's Christian communities down in Argentina, which uh, Dr. John, you know something about at least one Christian community down there in Argentina, and is they, that correct? I've heard of it, but I've not yet gotten any information from my uh, point of contact who's in Florida. Okay, okay. Anyway, so go right ahead. So that gives everybody the background. And uh, so go, ahead and, go ahead and share whatever you want to share. I just wanted to give people the background. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Um, I actually caught uh, an interview with Dr. Drew, uh, actually Dr. Colonel Drew Miller with uh, Mike Adams on the Health Ranger. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very, very articulate when he was on that interview. Um, and he did a really good job of kind of explaining what what to expect. But after having visited the, uh, the Texas location, I would imagine that some are more well developed than the one that I visited. And there's probably worse uh, others that are probably not as developed even, as even the Texas location. Um, so um, let's see, I'm trying to remember now what all I had to do here. So I, I had to actually set up an interview. So I called uh, not interview, but a, um, um, a visit to that location. So I called the one of the two uh, admins i suppose her name is anna i think that's anna uh dr drew's uh daughter anna so i went there or i thought the inter uh, the visit with uh his name is dustin down there in texas he's a former marine uh found out he's half japanese so we have something in common i'm a half korean so mm -hmm. uh Asian. um so i got down there visited with the guy very nice guy um he kind of showed me the the place but we also the, the the my hesitation about going down there. Let me explain this, um, because of course I'm looking for a place of believers, right? So that we can actually depend right. on the, yeah. the warring angels that are going to be present at these locations. So I wanted to right. go down there find out what exactly the the spiritual uh, atmosphere was like, you know. And of course, as you pointed out, 
it's it really depends on the leader of that group so that would be dustin um and so i want to find out a little bit more about him but <clears throat> what i found out in my call to anna was that apparently there's going to be a transgender man who's going to be at that location and i was like what <laughs> That may not be a location for me. So I wanted to find out more. And I texted that morning Justin and asked him, uh, you know, specifically about that. And he said, well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because they, the admin office uh, had let this person in without the, without having visited the location. So typically before someone plunks down money for, becoming a member, which by the way, the lowest level for one year is 1890. Uh, that's $1,000. Mm -hmm. And that's for a bunk. That's not a room. That's not a toilet. That's a bunk in a general uh, facility. Um, so, so Dustin was like, I don't, I don't understand why they didn't have him at least come and visit with me first. So I get a feel for the individual before we say, yes, he can come. Um, so I was really curious about that. What, what I found out was Dustin and his wife who run the ranch and they live there on site hundred percent of the time is that they are believers. His wife is a very strong believer. I actually got a chance to talk with her. Um, so, so I, I, I decided, okay, it, you know, I'm a little late in getting down there cause it's a four hour drive from where I'm at in Southwest Oklahoma to get down there to basically central Texas. So I decided, you know what, I still have time, you know, to get down there and see the place in the daylight and I'll just drive back during the night. So um, went down there, met with him. And before you could even uh, show up, you have to, like I say, make the appointment. He's waiting there at the gate for you to show up. So you can't just drive up and, and enter at any time. You mm -hmm. have to set an appointment. And, and I'll go into the membership, by the way, the membership, by the way, uh, you can't like in a case of an emergency they will declare an emergency like if something were to happen today on the eclipse day uh they would have declared an, uh, an emergency if you're a member they would have let you know and beforehand they would have given you a passcode so if you show up at the gate and you don't have the passcode they're not letting you in so it's right. kind of interesting um so i showed up met with uh dustin got to talk to him a little bit um just kind of get a feel for you know what the atmosphere is uh, and all that but and we we did have a, a discussion on the phone prior to that about you know who the membership you know what is the what is the uh the atmosphere as far as spirituality with the other individuals and he said by and large they're all christian or what this one individual the only one off that is not a christian not a believer uh, he even mentioned that there was a man who left his Bible there because he says he was going to want to be the spiritual leader. And I, I'm kind of, well, we'll see. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to buck anybody, but I'm just kind of, you never know. I mean, it could be a, a Baptist. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but um, but not not spiritually in tune as, say, you are or, or Sister Maria. And I certainly want to get to the point where I'm hearing the voice of God myself. Uh, and I think I do, but I just, I need to, I need to, uh, exercise that more. Um, I'm rambling a little bit here, but so, um, no, it's fine. you're doing fine, brother. Gotcha. <laughs> so, so, do you have any pictures, any photos that, that, uh, we could, if we can't show them, share them this time, maybe next time, or is there yeah, anything on their website? Oh, go ahead. There, so that's what, let me go ahead and get into that. So okay. when you go to their website, they have photographs, but the photographs or the, are of Colorado and Nevada. Uh, there might be a snapshot of the location in Texas, but it's of one structure. Um, and, and so my, my supposition is, <clears throat> because I know this for a fact, Dr. Drew is going to be, um, he's going to be at the Colorado camp. And, and I believe uh, Sister Maria called and found mm -hmm. out that the Colorado camp is completely full. So there's no chance of getting into Colorado. Um, so my guess is that they set up Colorado first because that's home base. And then they went and set right. up the other locations chronologically different, you know, and you could tell, right? Because Colorado and also Nevada, those are well-developed locations in my, in my estimation, because those are the photographs you'll see on the website. Okay. Doc, Dr. John, let me ask Mrs. Maria, is that, is that what they told you? I, I, I'm not positive about Colorado. 
Um, Colorado, all the Spartan level um, memberships are sold out. So it was the 18, what uh, uh, Brother John uh, said, um, what was that price? Like 1800 Yeah, um, those are all sold out. The, the um, more expensive, uh, what they call luxury um, mm -hmm. openings, they still had openings for. So what about the real basic ones like the bunks? They probably had some of those too. all sold out, all sold out completely. All, all the basic ones are sold out too. Yeah. Okay. okay. But just some luxury ones left. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's three different, three different or four different levels you can join at or whatever. Like right. That. You know, yeah. Depending on how nice a place you want. I see. Okay. Is that what you got too, Dr. John, about four different levels? Correct. There's about four different levels. Um, when I, when I was given the tour, uh, by the way, Dr. Drew actually showed up there because he flew in that evening, and I believe that's where they do their podcast from because they actually have on um, one of the floors of what they call the tower. It's like a four-story tower with a basement, and mm -hmm. it's not like huge, but it's, I don't know, maybe, um, I'm guessing maybe 25 or 30 feet wide uh, square going up, and, and then it's got like a... Um, a per not a perch, one of them, like a like a porch that, that basically wraps around one side, looking down the hill, and it's kind of like for a sniper uh, perspective, I, I suppose, you know, to see if anybody's coming up or anything like that. Um, but so there there are levels within that tower. Um, so one of the floors is actually uh, Dr. Drew's, and it's all built out. So it's got a shower, it's got a kitchen, and all that. So it's it's you know it's compact, but it, it looks really nice. And uh, there was, I'm trying to think, I think there was one floor on that tower that was still available and they were saying, hey, if you want to buy it, then we'll, we'll, let, you, we'll let you buy it or rent it or whatever. I'm like, well, let's start with a, with a bunk first. <laughs> yeah, so the, the uh, let me ask you this, do sure. you have any pictures or, or is, there, is there a picture of the tower or anything like that? Uh, anything like I, I believe if you go to the, the Fortitude Ranch, I'm not sure if uh, Sister Maria, if you could if you want to share um sure um i could do that and although it's hard to tell which um location you know they don't ex at least when i went through the website you know i'm like well is that the colorado or is that the west virginia um yeah the tower might be easy to tell because it might be taller than it is wide is it taller than it is wide brother um Right, right. You can you can tell. And actually, if you want me to share, I can do that. Yeah, let me. I think you can. Here. Yeah, I think you can share your okay. screen. Yeah, there's a button if here. He that does says share. Yeah, if he does share, then uh, would you, sister, would you mind making his picture bigger so people can see? Rather okay, than yeah. Postage size. Uh, postage stamp size picture doesn't tell us much. <laughs> so. Okay. Let me see. Let me know when you're ready. Um, so I ahead, think, uh, go, go ahead. Brother John, go ahead, okay. we're ready. Let's see if I can switch over here. There we oh. go, okay. Oh, nope, that's my screen. Hang on. Oh, that's your, <laughs> all right. Let me see if I can open up. Uh, oh, is that, okay. Okay, here we go, it should come up. All right. Okay, uh, all right. Okay, that, I, I think, I, I think, uh, Sister Maria, that might be you sharing because that's not the yeah. screen I'm on. Yeah. Okay. So. okay. okay yeah, she's go. going to go ahead and try it. She's going to go ahead and try it first, Brother okay. John, and then yeah, we'll that's fine. try it after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay so, so uh, as of location. Oh, go ahead. So, Sorry. Yeah. So, Sister Maria, if you could uh, scroll down a little bit there. Okay. So, that location right there, I believe, yeah. So, it says Fortitude Ranch, Nevada. And you, as you can see, that's pretty clean. It's got the solar panels. It's got the propane tank. Uh, then it's got that look down the valley or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of on a perch a little bit. Um, so I believe, if I remember correctly, that has two log cabins with the metal structure in the middle. The metal structure in the middle is kind of the common area. Um, and then the, the two cabins on the ends are where you would sleep and, and then have a lookout on both sides. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, well, okay, that might be it. Yeah. Uh, go, let me see here. Locations about 43 ranch. There's, I know that there's pick cause I scroll through this. Okay. So if you go to, uh, about, uh, right, yeah, about 
Fortitude Ranch, if you click and then go to Ranch Features right there. Yeah. And then scroll down. The, so this, I believe, is, is either Colorado. I think it's Colorado. It's got all these games and whatever. Again, more well developed than the Texas location. Scroll down. You can see the chickens, chicken coop. Um, and you can see they have, you know, wildlife. And those are basically, you know, pictures they probably grabbed off the Internet and then posted there because I doubt that those are actual members. Um, if you if you go down a bit more, it shows uh, target practice there. I believe those are probably accurate and that those are members doing target practice or whatever. Um, and again, I think that's e I think that's Colorado, but I'm not 100 percent sure. E either Colorado or Nevada. Those, in my opinion, are probably the most well developed. All right. Okay. Think, Colorado right. and Nevada. Okay. Most yeah. Well developed. All right. And yeah. do you uh, the one you went to. Uh, I guess we didn't, we didn't find any pictures of that or, or just that yeah. one or not yet. I, I know that there's a okay. tower in here somewhere, but if you keep scrolling, yeah. So you can see like the facilities there that looks like either Colorado or Nevada. Those are like say the log cabins. And the reason why they chose the log cabins, by the way, is because the logs are thick enough that it slows down bullets or even stops bullets, depending on what, uh, you know, what caliber it is. But that's yeah. what they told me, right? Yeah, but yeah, what's interesting is that in Texas, they have, um, you know, they have like this double wide trailer, which is actually the owner of the property. He's a documentary filmmaker, by the way. And so somehow he connected with Dr. Drew, I believe, and they set that all up okay. in, uh, in Texas. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find. OK. Long term food survival plans, training programs, franchising. <clears throat> while you're while you're looking, I'll say a little bit. If it, let me talk sure. for a minute, if it's okay with you guys. Uh, so I want everyone to know, as far as we know, there was no fake rapture, and thank God because they're up to no good, and uh, they may have sprayed people, but we'll find out in about eleven, ten or eleven days, incubation period uh, on this disease X. Uh, hopefully they did not. We've been praying God will put all this stuff off. But the first, if you check the movie, and I, I'll comment on this already, but a lot of people are just now joining us, I see on the chats here. Uh, if you check the movie, uh, which is basically their game plan, and part of their game plan, uh, Leave the World Behind, the, that movie, the first thing that happened, everything was peaceful and great until the, until the ship ran ashore, and then later the policeman mentions that this has happened a half a dozen times along the coast. Uh, the ships are going crazy. And then that's the beginning. That's the first one of all the chaos. The rest of the movie is, you know, disorder and chaos and trying to turn people against each other. So the very first uh, thing was the ships out of control, supposedly running ashore. So this has actually already happened with the ships hitting the bridges. They did two in one. So not just ships running out of control, but also bridges falling down that are important for infrastructure. So, yeah, so they've already hit, done two, two of these things, and they're planning to do a lot more. So uh, just so everybody knows, just because we didn't see anything in the eclipse yet that we know of doesn't mean it's, doesn't mean it's over, but a lot of people will start thinking that way. And it's just beginning. We got three and a half years of uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. And the prophecy, you know, the, pro the prediction was that we might, we'd see something, we might see something in the eclipse which I guess we didn't see it, so thank God for that. But uh, we've been praying God puts all this off as far as possible. But the prophecy is in, in 18 months from now, excuse me, 15 months from now, 15 months from now, there, uh, or even 14 and a half in that range, 90%, 80 to 90% of the people in the United States that are born in the United States, they'll be wiped out. Uh, this is called genocide. This is called, uh, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, and in multiple ways, pandemics and everything else. So, uh, and the worst of it, we're, God, we're praying God will put it all, put it off as much as possible. So I'm hoping that we've got a few more months, honestly, before it gets real bad. So uh, hopefully until September. And the reason I focus in until September is because 40 years ago in September, so 39 and a half years ago uh, or so, uh, the Lord told me the United States is going to be destroyed by war. A very clear prophecy. Uh, he didn't tell me when, but now he told me it's 40 years. That's a 40-year prophecy. So he told me that about 
about six months ago. It's a 40 year prophecy, maybe a year ago. So uh, 40 years doesn't start until September. So hopefully God will put it all off till September, maybe longer. It depends on how many people pray and repent and fast, uh, you know, that type of attitude. So it's important. And then it is also important to find places that are godly and they have uh, their food concepts taken care of and maybe so godliness number one and then basic necessities number two food and water uh, do you think they have uh, their food the food situation taken care of there brother john and in texas i want to say that probably not as much as you see in these pictures that uh sister maria has going there um if you sister maria if you i think there's a picture of a shell like a food storage area uh oh you, you scroll scroll up a little bit I'm I'm trying to track with you here as well. Oh no, the other direction. I'm sorry. Oh. A little, little bit more, a little bit more. Right there. So there's there's the food storage, right? That is not Texas. Okay. So it's not that well organized. The room is not that big. Okay. But they do have some storage of food. Yeah, not they, enough for three and a half years. It doesn't sound, even this doesn't no. look like three and a half years worth. Uh, but uh, maybe it depends on how many people we're talking. And maybe some of these are planning to hunt elk and, and deer and all that, whatever they need to, to survive, um, you know, which makes sense also if you're in an area where you can hunt. Um, I don't think Texas. I think it's too dry down there. What do you think? What do you think of the area when you went down there? Texas. No, it's actually a nice area. It's very well wooded. Um, there's a lot of cattle ranchers around that area as well. What's interesting okay, is this location, they have uh, six medical doctors, and then including myself, it would be seven. And not that I'm a medical doctor, I'm a chiropractor. But it's very interesting. So what their plan is, because there's so many uh, ranchers around there that they could swap, you know, or barter with uh, cattle, you know, getting meat or whatever for medical services. Yeah, is, is, there, is there a plan? Yeah, is there a plan? Excellent. So, excellent. so of course, I can do chiropractic. Not that that's going to be as probably uh, as important as, say, somebody got injured, broke their arm or whatever. Um, right. Right. Yeah. If you want to go, Sister Maria, to staff, uh, go up to about and go to staff. And there's a, at least a picture of, or partial picture. Scroll down. Okay, that's Dr. Drew. Um and that's, uh, who is that guy? Oh, he's a different location. He's in West Virginia. The next one is uh, Wisconsin, then Jeff. Yep. Okay, keep going right there. So that is that is Dustin. I uh, don't know his last name is. They don't, they don't you can see they put Dustin G, uh, former US uh, Marine Corps. Um, so you can see part in the background there, you can see the, the tower. That's really the only uh, substantial structure that they built on property. The others, again, are trailers. There's a double wide trailer. And he, he and his wife live in a single wide trailer uh, on the property. They do have, I want to say, what is it, goats and a llama. The llama is supposedly co protecting the goats or sheep. Okay. I'm not sure um they do have chickens um uh they do have a bunker there so it's a it's a pretty pretty thick walled uh metal structure and they have bunks in there as well that's where they're storing like individual uh people's food like if somebody had a special diet they would go and bring their whatever and their gluten-free food or something like that um okay. yeah so that's is that power is that, Go ahead. is that tarot or is narrow, narrow as it looks in the picture? It looks like it's only, uh, you know, like 10 feet wide and 10 feet tall. I mean, well, I see one floor and then there's two, there's two or three more floors. Is it really that narrow wide? The width? It, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty narrow, but it's not 10. It's uh, a little wider than that. Maybe 12. I'm guessing yeah. it's more like 20, 20 by 20 okay. and then. Out. Well, in the picture, it looks like the high, the first floor is exactly the same as the width as what it looks like in the picture. So you're saying it's maybe twice that wide is what it looks like. Yeah, and and there, like I said, there's four there's four stories. Um, I'm not sure who's doing the building on it uh, as far as the carpentry and everything, but whoever's doing the job is not doing a very good job. <laughs> it's not clean. Okay. Um, is it half done, half done, or all the way done, or finished on this tower? No, it's not. It's not built out. So, in other words, okay. if you were if you were somebody who wanted to build it out, like you wanted to buy the floor, rent the floor, whatever, you could build it to your your specification. So it's kind of it's kind rough? of 
Yeah, go ahead. Is the roof on? The roof on? Roof yeah, the, roof, the roof is there. I mean, the 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 shell is there. The only built-out floor in the tower is Dr. Drew's. Okay. Every okay. every other floor is like it's got sheetrock, um, and it's not it's not built out. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All and right. There's, okay. And there's other there's other um, structures that they're building, but it's uh, you know like there's one. I want to say it's like a two story that they're building, but it's not, it doesn't even have a roof on it yet completely. So okay. that's kind of the unfortunate thing is, is, you know, the pictures that are shown here on the website make you lead you to believe that everything is ready to go, but it's not at least yeah. not in Texas. And what's yeah. interesting is they don't show any pictures of the other locations. Like with right. the staff that you see there, you see a guy in the woods, you see another guy with his dogs. You don't see any structures. <laughs> Right. So, so, so it just might, makes you, you might wonder. not have any. You might yeah, go then, there and then, then, you have to bring a tent. Right. Right. I, I don't know. So um, these people are not prepared, probably. And, and except for the three, the one, you, the one you visited sounds like it's halfway prepared, and the other two, uh, maybe three quarters, maybe ninety percent. Uh, yeah, the other two, but then the other five, maybe they're just showing pictures of their dog, and it's called Ron Weasley and Starbucks. Right. Yeah. So, so again, my, my initial my initial impression was that they uh, everything was built out, and all you need to do is rent a space. That's not the case. Right. In Texas, right. You you rent the space, but when you get there, there's work to be done. Right. Like construction or, uh, you know, yeah. there's no there was no garden. I didn't see any garden. Yeah, that's too bad. But, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so maybe some people will be better off making their own. And there will be a lot of these forming. I, I imagine there's a couple hundred that we don't know about yet. I see in the comments, uh, one sister asked, where's the video that talked about the first 10 or 11? And that was the first video we did, says, if you go to our uh, YouTube channel called Heralding the Messiah, which is the one we're broadcasting from right now, uh, you can find all of them listed. There's only like six or seven or eight listed there. And uh, it's the first, you can see the dates. You can, you can just open them up and see the dates on them. Uh, it was it the first one we did, Maria, Sister Maria, yeah. or the second yeah. one? Yeah, and I'll, one. yeah. I'll go ahead and put, uh, I'll go ahead and put a list together and uh, create a PDF and post it on our, uh, on our website. I mean, not on our website, on, on YouTube, on the homepage. So you could click and download it. So I'll, I'll, yeah. Do, that. Yeah. I'll do that by the next show. Yeah, yeah, don't don't sweat it. Whenever you get to it, they can. It's only six or seven shows, so yeah. it's easy to. It might not even be seven. Yeah, it's easy to find them. You know, it's not like they got to look through a hundred of them, uh, whatever. So yeah, anything else you'd like to share, brother John? Uh, thank you, Doctor John, for being our guest. By the way, I really appreciate. Oh it. yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so yeah, I think the the two things that are important, at least for that location or any location, is uh, as you point out, is you know what is the spiritual atmosphere. How mature are the individuals? And that's the thing we, I don't know. Um, what I do know, what, one question that I had in my mind is, okay, think about it. The medical doctors, they, in order for them to stay in practice, and of course, this is a little bit past this now, they had to take a shot, right? Um, right. Or they waited it out and then they're let back in and they didn't have to take the shot. I don't know what the situation is. And there are six medical doctors that are going to show up there. Mm -hmm. So... What is their what is their medical situation? Because if they've taken the shot, that means that they have the ability or not the ability, but the unfortunate situation where they're transfecting everyone. Because now their right. body is a uh, uh, what is it called? A hydrogel manufacturing plant. Right. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do think that some medical doctors that had their own practice did not take the shot. And the reason I think that is because is because uh, the uh, um, the carnivore doctors uh, they they had a practice the whole time. I've been following them for a while, and uh, and there's quite a few of them on YouTube. So, uh, and, and they pretty much said they did not. So, uh, so they most of them have their own practice. So, uh, they're not working for a big hospital or you know whatever you know some you know they got a private practice. So, I think they I think some of them managed to skirt it. But yeah, in general, you're correct. Most of them did take it. Yeah. So those are some things that make me kind of wonder about the, the situation there in Texas, because you don't know who who your uh, the, the other members are going to be or anything like that. 
Now, one thing I did uh, see, he did show me kind of some of the arsenal that they had down there. And those were some members that they left there. Um, and apparently there are going to be some people who are former military that are, that are going to be on, on staff there as well. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the, what the whole uh, membership roster is going to be or anything like that. I did ask, and he says, we don't, we don't give that information. I said, well, I mean, as far as membership, do you have just five or is it more than that? He says, oh, it's more than that. He said, it's, it's uh, more than 60, but less than 100. But okay. from what, yeah, from, from what I gather, though, from looking at the, the layout of their property, uh, it's going to be crowded because, first of all, the facilities are not built out. Mm -hmm. Right. So where are they going to right. stay? Yeah, so 60 people. Yeah, you're not going to fit in that area is what it sounds like to me. But they're, maybe they're no. counting on half of them not showing up. If they do the lockdowns first, which I suspect they will, uh, or, you know, they don't have to do official lockdowns. They could just simply have traffic jams and everywhere. Like you see on uh, Leave the World Behind, they got uh, they got all these Tesla cars running into each other, and that stops the traffic. You know, that, you can't get around them. Uh, they've blocked the whole roads, you know, and so stuff like that could be going on uh, on the next I just fully believe this within the next uh, within the next year uh, you'll see crazy crazy stuff it might be sooner uh yeah so yeah so, some people say in 40 days Go like ahead, you, um you mentioned a, a gate um how fortified is that gate i mean you know we saw um a a good number of people at the border uh pretty much just knocked down over by um I believe it was El Paso, right? There was like a rush on the border and they knocked down everything that uh, had been put up. Um, so, um, you know, how, how, how secure is it? I mean, it's, it, they're, they're not the fortified walls of Jerusalem, right? It's, or or uh, uh, what was the name of that other city? Uh, uh, Jericho, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, nowhere near fortified is that. Um, so the gate is actually just a cattle gate. I mean, oh. literally, you could buy that at a at a farm and feed store. It's just tubes, you know, and you just swing it open. So that's the gate. <laughs> okay. It's the kind. It's the kind of gate that Carnivore Maggie can just jump over. Uh, you know, so it's not. You I mean, can jump, yeah. over, jump over. She's eighty four years old. Or 80, I think she's eighty four or eighty two. She can she can put her hand on the fence and jump over. Uh, that's pretty good, you know. Wow. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's the kind that sounds like it is. She raises cattle up in Michigan, in case anybody doesn't know who I'm talking about. We, we played one of her videos on our other program on Odyssey. Uh, well, it's on Vimeo. No, what is it, Vimeo? Or Vimeo? What is it? Wait, live stream or something like that. But anyway, we every Wednesday we have a program. And uh, she's, uh, she's been eating carnivores since she was uh, uh, 17 years old, and she's like wow. 82 or 84. And she can still jump over a fence. You know, put one hand on the fence and jump over it, and grab the bull and wrestle him down in hog time. And <laughs> wow! <laughs> grab the bull by the horns and wrestle him down in hog time at 80, 80 some years old. Yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. Uh, you know, and she looks good too. She don't look, she don't look eighty. She looks maybe mm -hmm. seventy or sixty somewhere in there. Uh, so, yeah. so brother Rick said, reach out to Axe Decentralized Real Estate for the community you're looking for. They are developing off-grid ranches all over the United States. We're buying into the Florida ranch called Pano, Panoplia. So that's that's interesting. I'll go over there right now and see what. Excellent. Is yeah, Axe decentralized what? Axe. Real estate. Real estate, yeah. Axe decentralized real estate for the community you're looking for. They they are developing off-grid ranches all over the U.S. We're buying into the Florida ranch called Panoplia. Panoplia. Uh, so maybe a little like Monopoly or something, or, or maybe a little like uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> it's uh, there's a word, another word I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, it's it's an interesting name they got there. But uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe they're more developed uh, we'll see we'll find out uh you know maybe yeah the problem is uh, the biggest problem i see is people are not really prepared at this point most most of these places but it does sound like there's one and and we did cover another 10 that i'd say half of them are fairly well prepared 
but uh, yeah, so there's at least there's at least five to eight. But and somebody should check out this. Uh, maybe Brother Rick, after you've been to one of them, Brother Rick, why don't you be a guest on our program, Brother Rick Flicks, and you can talk about what you've seen. Take pictures, and let's try to put them on the screen. And, uh, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear more about it because these are the things people need right now. They need to get, if you're if you're on your own as a Christian, you better have a really strong faith to survive and, uh, you know, call down fire on the enemy when they come after you and stuff like this. Because Otherwise, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And then even even people like that, you know, you you might be doing a community of service by joining them or at least visiting them, living near them or something like that. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, so thank you, Brother Rick, for that uh, heads up. We appreciate it. How many, Brother Rick, if you know, how many uh, how many locations do they have? How many of these ranches do they have that they they're putting together? Um, yeah, and of course. Yeah, so anyway, you can chat that in or call in if you'd like uh, the numbers. We'll put the number on the screen in a few minutes. Uh, Brother John, Dr. John, do you have anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, there was, let me think about this. There was something about, uh, it seemed like that there was another topic I was going to want to bring up, but I'm, I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Okay. Okay. Well, we have an advertisement. I don't know if Sister Maria is going to be able to play it. Uh, if not, we'll play it on our other program. Uh, Brother Martin helps with uh, on Wednesday. But it's an advertisement for the Mark of the Beast. There's actually people that have it, and well, we know we've known people who had it for a long time. They have two sets, test cities. They started three years ago here. But uh, this girl thinks it's the greatest thing ever, and she's it's some sort of advertisement. Yeah. Can you play that one, Sister Maria? Um, I can't get to the link. Did you email it to me? Um, or yeah, about three it? times. And I put it on Skype chat also. Uh, uh, let, but, me, uh, uh, let me go look. Um, by the, by yeah, the way, while you're doing I, that, while you're doing that, I found on Axe, um, uh, that site you're on right now. Yeah. If you, yeah. Go, if you go to, let me make sure where I'm at here, available now, Little G Ranch, and, and you scroll down, you'll finally get to a pricing table. And that's for plots of land. That's two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for for one available. Oh wow, that's expensive. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like renting a bunk. Let me send it to you again, Sister Maria. How do I? How's the best way? I know uh, you don't open Skype while we're talking on this one. So yeah. what's the best way? Uh, email. Email. Okay. Uh, let's go to email. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let me go over there. You say go to menu and then find financing, schedule a visit. Uh, oh, view. Yeah, view properties and go to avail, hit uh, view properties and go to Little G Ranch, Texas. And then click uh, available now. And, well, it goes back to Texas. Click on Texas again. I, I think it's a little bit of a loop there. Yeah, and then just scroll down. Just keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. It's probably going to, yeah, so right, pretty soon you get to pricing table. Oh, there right. we go. Yeah. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Yeah, so those are the plots. So there's, there's the prices. Okay. So they're selling land nearby is what they're doing. Is that correct? So, yeah, and I've and I've run into this before, and it was uh, up in the Ozarks, and of course, you know, maybe not a good idea to go there because the New Madrid fault line, um, being closer, that is. But uh, yeah, that's going to cut I, loose. Just so anybody don't know that there's going to be thousands of earthquakes uh, in the middle of the United States, and that's going to it's, it's yeah, I don't know exactly when it's going to start, but it's going to be in the next three and a half years for sure, and it's going to last for years when it starts multiple years not one year not but at least two years maybe three uh yeah so that's what he's talking about about new madrid uh, some people are up on this some people are not um yeah so good to fill them in a little bit yeah so what, what are we looking at there are different plots for sale down in mm -hmm. texas is that what that is yeah it's a pricing okay. table so you basically okay. still have to put something on it Right. It's, it's okay. probably just a, a plot of land and you've got to um, build on it. And that's the similar yeah, situation I've I run into with other locations like right. in uh, like I, Ozark. Yeah, I think that's just foolishness myself because land ownership is going to be history in about, you know, in about six months. Uh, and nobody owns anything. They think they do, but they don't. Uh, so. <laughs> 
far as land goes, you know, if you, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be crazy. Um, yeah, people are delusional. A lot of these people are delusional that what they're doing. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so thanks for sharing that. Sis, can you check your email? See if I, can I am. Them? Okay, I'm doing that right now. We was hoping to play two videos, but uh, I guess time didn't permit at all. So, but well, at least maybe we'll get one. Maybe, um, yeah. Oh, it's all on. Right. No, I'll go through the. I'll go through the comments while you're doing that. It's on Facebook. Okay, hang on. This. It's on uh, Facebook. It's on yeah, Facebook. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got it. I got it. it. No, no, I got it. Okay. I got it. Let me switch over right, to. Right okay, everyone can see that. Let's. Uh, Okay, Let's they're play. calling it O chip on this video. All right, ready? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, hang on. And Where's the... Yeah, the volume's usually up at the top. Oh, the yeah, volume. there you go. All right, here we go. Can you make it bigger? Probably not. Uh, plus, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. I don't think the audience can hear anything either. Can you no. hear me, Sister Maria? Yeah, I'd say, say, is this the one? Well, it doesn't look like it. Uh, keep going, let's see. Keep going. <laughs> it, it says the mark of the beast. <laughs> yeah, I think it probably is, but let's see. Keep, I don't remember this first part. Keep okay. going. I haven't played it in about a, about a week. I found this about a week ago. Somebody okay. sent it to me. I think. So thank okay. whoever sent it to me, thank you. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I still can't hear it. What? Still cannot hear it. No, I hear nothing. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, brother John, are you hearing anything? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, so the video don't work. The sound audio don't work the, on the video. The audio doesn't. It should work. I'm hearing it loud and clear over my earphones. Let's see. Yeah. Um, well. Camera I guess just go ahead and play. It's short enough that we'll just play it and let them walk. Through. You know, just go ahead and play it. At least we got video. Just make it as big as you can and play it. Sound it's, it's very tiny okay. on my screen. It's it's smaller than a postage stamp on my screen, and I can't seem to find any adjustment here to make it bigger. Can you hear it now? Hold on. No. It's, Hold on. It's not. Yeah. No. Did, that didn't help. That it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Just go ahead and play it. We're probably halfway through it. It's, uh, but uh, go ahead and play. Hit, just hit play and play it. We'll we'll figure okay. it out later. We'll show it again on Brother Martin. And the people can go there on our on our Wednesday program. And yeah. Brother Martin knows how to make it bigger and more audio and all that stuff. I'll uh, put a link in the uh, in the chat. There you go. Yeah, people can watch it on the link in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Go right ahead and hit play, sis. Let's, oh, let's okay. watch the rest of. It. This may not be the right one, but uh, if it does, if it doesn't switch to the girl that's advertising it, keep going. It's, okay. It looks like you stopped. Yeah. If it doesn't switch to the girl that's advertising, that's the wrong video. Somehow I got the wrong video. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say somehow I got the wrong video. Um, we're going to have to check this. And again, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully next time we get more time to review the videos ahead of time, prepare. But uh, it's all right. This is our first video, so it's uh, this looks like it's starting over again. It is a short one like this, but it's not this one. It's uh, it's there's a young lady who's talking about how great this chip is that she's getting in her hand, basically. Uh, yeah, go ahead and cut that one, brother, sister. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Someone's coming in on in the comments. Go back one video. Go back so, one video. Somehow we accidentally went forward one video. Okay. This this there one. There it is. That's the one. Okay. All right. That's the one. Go ahead and play that. But again, the the audio is not working. But anyway, yeah, let people can see the, the audio. Video. Yeah. And let me put that. Um, let me put that link in the chat. Um, yeah, that's the right one. That's yeah, the right I'm not one. Sure and this brother, me. this brother, I re really appreciate him. That he's trying to wake people up to the t signs of the time. So so many Christians are fast asleep, you know, fully asleep, you know, it just blows your mind. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. And even even down at the Fortitude Ranch, Brother John, do you think those people know that we're about to enter the Great Tribulation? Not a clue. They had not a clue. I even spoke briefly to Dr. Drew, and he didn't seem like anything was going on. 
Yeah. I mean, People obviously there, there are other things going on, but not they have no idea about the clips being yeah. the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 11 days from the Great Tribulation or 40 days from the Great Tribulation, whichever, however you want to look at it. It's close enough. But the ships have already started crashing, which is exactly what they showed on Leave the World Behind. And that's Leave the World Behind is centered on the second wave or the beginning of the second wave uh, before the third wave of, of World War III. The first wave is, is the foreigner invasions, uh, the illegals coming in, mm -hmm. United States and Europe. And uh, the second wave is all kinds of chaos, turning off the electricity. First one, first part of that wave was running running ships into bridges. And it shows it right in the movie, uh, running them ashore, you know, out of control, supposedly, and multiple ships. And uh, yeah, so the, there's there going to be multiple weird attacks. And they showed the eclipse right at the beginning also, which is really, I didn't see that before. I just saw it today uh, when I was, the Lord told me to play it again. I played it again, just clicked on a random that the Lord felt, you know, because there's all, they're all different. There's like a hundred short versions of that movie and uh, I just clicked one at random and then about the second third thing that came on my screen is eclipse and they never said eclipse but that's what it was it had the moon the the earth the moon and the sun all lining up and the sun is you know the moon's blocking the sun that's an eclipse and, <laughs> and, and so it's right there that's the beginning that's the very beginning but you know so the ship's running in uh, that's a little out of order because the you know but again when you watch a movie shortened you don't know for sure if they didn't put some things out of order on the movie shortened, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so I didn't watch the regular movie, but uh, I'm telling you that Obama and all of those elite know exactly what's coming because they're the ones doing it, you know? And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, they're exposing themselves. That's their MO. The dark side has to tell you before they, before they kill you. So they have to tell you all about it. And <laughs> that's just the way, the way they do things. It's uh, they, they're, yeah. So anyway, Interesting let, stuff. Let, for me, sure. let me try this because I think I, I might have figured it out. Hold on. I'm going to. And then. No. No. Same. But your voice was a lot louder when you did that. Uh, sister. Is Brad. my voice louder now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Quite a bit louder. Yeah. You're oh. blasting in my, on my screen. You're like try double or on my screen. On my, okay. you know. Now it should be fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's so that close to normal. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, don't worry Steve. about it. Just play, just, just play the video, and we don't worry about the audio. You can see how she's ranting and raving about this little chip. Uh, yeah, go ahead and in play the it. arm. Let me see. She says the greatest thing ever. I think there's enough. Yeah, they give you the words right there. They can read. It's a powerhouse. It's got everything I need. It's got my credit cards. It's got my ID. It's got my medical information. It's got my keys. It's just when you go buy groceries, you just tap it, and bam, you're done. It's like magic. It's the greatest thing ever. In emergency, it can save your life because you got all your medical ID if you're allergic to any medicine or whatever. It's I I feel like I'm a sci-fi character. Superpowers. Uh, no more digging in your pockets to find things, and no more carrying things around. Uh, you know, it just it's the greatest thing. That's so they're advertising the chip, the microchip, and I'm glad this brother found it. I'm glad he's. Uh, so I think you went on to the next video somehow accidentally or okay you met no it's the same one okay yeah so I'm glad he's exposing a very short clip and that's a lot, what a lot of people watch nowadays so they need to know uh, he's exposing it and that's good they, they need to know what he has to say about it and and what the Bible has to say and what God has to say and all these people delusional thinking it's the greatest thing ever and they're going to be uh, super like Superman because they got this tip implanted in their arm or in their hand or whatever um, yeah so. And crazy stuff, crazy stuff. And of course, you can also get it through uh, through uh, shot, um, and which already happened. So there are people already, in my opinion, uh, already marked. Let's say it that way. Got to be careful what we say on YouTube. But anyway, um, yeah. Can, all right. Can I ask you a question real quick, Doctor T? Sure. So what are your thoughts about the uh, comment that doc, uh, Brother Christopher made on the last video about um, being sprayed, those people who are watching the eclipse? I did come across another video where a sheriff who didn't disclose his name, but he was a friend of the, of the young man who did the podcast and said that there was going to be three waves of uh, uh, airplanes, even gave the uh, type of airplane that were going to, Two hours before totality, depending on what location, I don't know, uh, but two hours before they want to spray, one hour before they want to spray, and then 30 minutes they're going to spray. So three layers. 
And then yeah, I totally, the individuals would get I totally sick. believe it. Go ahead, go ahead. I yeah, you. the individual would get sick at seven days, and then 30 days, and then 60 days, and 90 days, they're just going to get progressively worse. Yeah, yeah, it's very possible that they did that. And uh, in other words, it seems like everything went normal, but you know, seems like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, yeah, we know that. We know 11 days at the beginning of the 1,260 day Great Tribulation, Great Tribulation, or in the Tribulation now. But uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, so it's very possible that uh, that you'll start seeing. Yeah, but we do have the power of God, and thank God for that. And uh, we don't have to be afraid of sickness uh, if you if your if your faith is strong. If you don't get miracles on demand, well, then you better start studying uh, divine healing. Uh, I've taught on it a lot, and uh, it's on the ARCA. There's 707 programs, plus Kenneth Hagen has over 500 hours worth of teachings on YouTube for free. Kenneth E. Hagen, he teaches on the power of God and divine healing. So we should be at the level where we get miracles on demand as we need them, and God can heal anything. And if you don't, if you're not at that level, uh, it doesn't look that good. I just got a call. Let me see who's. We hear something there in the background. Sorry about that. What'd you say? Oh, I was just you hearing music told. in the background. You heard music in the background? Uh, that Was it that ringtone? Is that what you heard? Yeah, we heard the ringtone. Yeah. Well, welcome, caller. Uh, what's your name? Hello, this is Eddie Petch, uh, Dr. Timothy Thrapp and Maria. I'd like to thank you both for uh, the work that you're doing for all of us. And uh, Dr. Thrapp, I'm on video number 27. I've been awake for about a year and uh, 27 of the 700 in the library to wits, and they're incredible. Excellent. I love them, I love them all. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's God's production, and it's the best It's the best you'll ever see, I think. Yeah, nothing else even close, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I watch them myself, and I get edified every time I watch them. So. <laughs> and, I, and a lot of times, I don't remember saying any of that stuff, so it was God, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, maybe I remember half of it, don't remember the other half of it. So, uh, yeah, it's God. So, yeah, thank you, Brother Eddie. And I'm glad you brought that out because it'll, it'll help other people realize that they have a treasure trove of teachings for free. Yes, most sir. most minister, ministries sell stuff like this. We don't, we're the only thing, you know, we do have minimum donations on, on some gifts, but 99% of everything we produce is free. So, uh, yeah. It's an honor to speak with you, and uh, I'll, I'll share to you with you uh, some of my growth um i'm so i'm 52 and 53 this year uh i took my 72 year old father fishing today um and uh on the rod that i handed him <clears throat> i asked jesus to put on them uh, the pond was stocked in mass western massachusetts with uh brown, brown trout and rainbow trout i, I said uh jesus if you, if you would please put a big uh Give him in the name of Jesus. Please give him a big brown trout and to take home. And uh, he didn't get a brown one, but he he got a rainbow one. And uh, then we had a little. It didn't rain. We had a rainbow up in the sky too, which was pretty to look at. Wow! Um, so God gave him a rainbow trout and a rainbow in the sky. It's saying <laughs> almost the same. Thing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so what I want to share with with you folks is a prayer. Uh, and that I that I made back in January. Uh, now uh, I'm kind of going to be re I'm reading from a. Um, I started going to church last year, uh, and I have a very good uh, uh, local uh, priest who I, I think is awesome. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of read through this because it covers it covers everything as to why I put this together, and the 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 background the the purpose is is um, I'm taking the divine mercy image. Okay, and and using it, to, I didn't. I, I got one shot. Um, I thought I'd be gonna call it the jab. I guess I, I don't want to get this site in trouble. Right. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I got the the one of two, the uh, sizing, um, and uh, and then and then like uh, talked myself out of the second one going back, uh, and I'm glad. But uh, in the boys. My, my two my two sons did not get them, but my daughter and my wife did, and my wife was compelled to by work. So I started working naturally when I learned more. Uh, so here's here's my thought. I, I'm curious 
uh, what your I value your guidance very much, Doctor Thrapp, but I'm uh, so I want to see what you what you think of it for people because it has the component of using our imagination and our faith to uh, create to throw a monkey wrench in their plans. So, so Father, I so saw I'm just, just going to read this because uh, it's a little more concise. I share this with you because I value your guidance. Um, I hope to stretch the divine mercy image against the conspiracy theory I wish made no sense. My gut feeling prompted me to put this together for my wife and daughter. They both got all blank shot jabs and boosts. Sometimes they think I'm nuts in this instance. I hope I am, Ed. Um, so here's the attached. Okay, the problem and the theory, the jabs. Uh, there's a patented technology which allows our phones to be used as a tool in a very evil plan. So if, if for those who followed official guidelines, good pro-social people like my family members, uh, now maybe their mRNA has hidden inactive terror cells. I don't know for sure, but I've been following the sites to the best of my ability. Uh, and some say that uh, if you look at John Bell, he has a, uh, a site um, that uh, he just started about six or seven weeks in awesome shows on youtube john bell again uh, you'll see heralding but uh no that's yours i'm sorry okay anyways some say the emergency broadcast system can be used to cause our phones to emit a patented frequency which activates some patented process like a virus or cancer or whatever right so lots of people die or get sick it's into 2030 evil accomplished so here's what i, I did for my daughter I sent her a picture of the Divine Mercy. She's a confirmed Catholic, so she knows how to bless it, which is basically just just bring that picture up on your desktop, uh, make the sign of the cross, and, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless this image. Now your image is blessed. Put it on the, um, save it to your home and, and lock screen on your phone, which, and now uh, Heavenly Father, say the Our Father, then Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I humbly ask the divine mercy serve to protect this device from being used as an instrument to carry out any evil whatsoever. Please neutralize any evil schemes attempting to use this device while I faithfully display the divine mercy on my home screen. All glory be to God. Amen. And Amen. so I tried to clear this with people and um, no one's yeah yeah well i think it's a great prayer brother and uh just always remember that uh you know god is the answer and uh just keep pressing in our as our faith grows it's easier to believe and all you really have to do is not, it's not so much about the word more about the believing but god is with us. god is with you god is uh you know every, it was both the father son and the holy ghost so all three are with you and they're with us and he's our protector and then he sends angels as well so he's our protector in everything we do so thank you for sharing that brother we appreciate it sister maria were you able to hear him okay yeah clearly good. Mm -hmm. good, good good okay because i have my two computers just kind of sitting near each other so they, i had it didn't work when we tried to do it on the same computer so i have the other computer yeah so thank you brother for calling in anything else you'd like to add um, if you need any help, um, maybe you could, uh, you have my number now. You can call me back when it's convenient for you or send me a text and, and let me know at some time. I'm, I'm Eastern Standard Time. It's right now 8 p.m. Okay. So you're offering to help out with the, help out with the ministry. Are, what, what is your skills? Are you skilled on computers or? Um, well, it, it was, uh, I, I was at one point, uh, in, um, a criminal justice PhD program at SUNY Albany's Nelson Rockefeller School of Criminal Justice, and it was awesome. Uh, and then we got blessed with kids. So okay. my wife had the uh, better than graduate insurance was her teaching job, and I I, I stepped out to stay home. Okay. And as you know, after three years, you lose about seventy percent of working vocabulary. And it's been uh, that was uh, ninety nine okay. about. Okay. So. Uh, Statistics is it's a favorite of mine, research design, and okay. but I don't know anything about physics, so I'm enjoying learning from your uh, your videos. Okay, okay good. Your days of divine mercy supposedly saved a church. Amen. And, uh, Lavina, right? Yeah, amen. Hanging in the, right. Yeah. 
we can use that. Yeah, amen. My daughter put it on the phone. Amen. Amen. Okay, brother, thank you so much for calling in, and we'll we'll be in touch. Thank you for having me. Bless you. God bless you. Bye bye. All right. Well, that's one of our dear brothers who uh, has been benefiting from learning the programs. Uh, sounds like he's Catholic background. God loves the Catholics too. We minister to a lot of Catholics over here, and they are some of the easiest people to get healed uh, of all. Uh, yeah. So it's it's good he's waking up and. Uh, and growing in the Lord, so that's good. Uh, all right, Doctor John, uh, anything you'd like to add or? Sure. Well, I do have a question for you. Um, obviously, I'm I'm amongst you know you two that are very uh, you're able to hear the voice of God, Sister Maria, and I know Doctor T. Um, what would you suggest for those of us who are endeavoring to hear the voice of God? Obviously, spending more time in in reading Scripture and prayer, but is there anything specific that you would point to and say that definitely will work? Okay. Sister Maria, you want to answer that first since you've been kind of quiet in this program or it's directed to both of us. So. Not, not that I, you know, I still do a lot of this, but when I really um, pressed in with worship, hmm. um, and what I mean is um, just singing to him, It, you know, you don't, necessarily have to play worship music but learn some of the lyrics to a lot of the songs and and then while you're out walking just uh, uh, sing to him and pray in tongues if you can pray in tongues those those when when I uh, you know I, I do those but um, when I found that I was really really pressing in and doing a lot of it that's when I heard from him Amen. Especially, Amen. especially in dreams, you know. Amen. If you seek for me, the scripture says, "If you seek for me, you will find me." If you seek for yeah. me with all your heart, and mm -hmm. so it, it's a whole heart type thing. But yeah, worship. Uh, you know, some people. It's an interesting concept. You know, in other words, some people think it's just, just the music. It's no, it's about loving God. You love Him with all your heart. Love. Mm -hmm. Send the beam of love to God, and of course He's everywhere, but He's in heaven mainly. So send the beam of love to God, and and just and just meditate and send, keep sending, send all you can, and you know, He'll eventually answer you. And uh, sometimes the answers are audible, sometimes they're through other prophets, sometimes they're through uh, um, in strong intuition. Like this morning, um, the Lord, I was praying, and the Lord said, "No, I want you to watch that again." I just I just went with the flow, and I clicked on. The right one, and there's an eclipse right at the beginning of this. Uh, uh, one of these shortened. There's like 20 different. I typed in uh, "Leave the World Behind" movie shortened on YouTube, and there's like 20 or 30 or 40 came up. And I just clicked the one and ran. Not the top one. It was maybe the third, second or third one down. So then I started playing it. Does an eclipse, uh, which is really surprising. And then it showed the first thing was the ships hitting gr ground, and uh, and and after the eclipse, you know. But of course, it happened before. But that doesn't mean. Whoever put the movie shortened together might have switched it around, you know, uh, maybe, you know. But uh, anyway, it's the close to simultaneous, let's say it that way. It's very close to simultaneous. In the big picture, you know, which God always looks at the big picture. So in the big picture, it's very close to simultaneous. And then who's to say there might not be more of these in the next two weeks or three weeks also. So uh, there have been like three or four or five already, maybe six, and uh, there could be more, you know. And, and oftentimes we don't even hear what's going on in other countries. We only hear about what's going on in the United States. So. Uh, Europe is definitely under attack as well. It's, um, they're almost simultaneous with with the United States. It's, it's Europe coming down, and almost the same kind of judgment going on in the. In, so it's the whole uh, NATO, you could say, or the whole uh, the whole you know you can some people call it the Western Empire, I guess, or whatever you know whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Very good question. So yeah, send all the love you can, and uh, and God will receive, and God will send, and God will. And if you ask, you know, whatever it is you're asking for, He'll give you specifics. Mm -hmm. It gets easier the more you do it too. Uh, the more we uh, surrender to God, and the more we press in, pressing in, and sending all the love you can, because God is love. And so when you send love, it's He. It's, it's part of Him. You know, He can't ignore it. He cannot ignore it. He cannot ignore. It love uh, you know the, and you can ask for an anointing of love too everybody listening you, you can ask for a 
stronger amount of love than you ever had before. And you can ask God to increase that, and he will. He doesn't give you faith by asking. It doesn't hurt to ask, but he gives you faith by studying and meditating. But he gives you love just by practicing love. He'll give you more love. He'll give you the ability to love more. And pretty soon your love is huge. And when it's huge, God cannot ignore it. I would say God cannot ignore it. He cannot ignore faith, and he cannot ignore love. Uh, genuine godly love. It's uh, he sees it and he walks. He walks in it. He, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's a part of him. You cannot. Uh, you, yeah. You cannot ignore a part of him. Let's say it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> not for a long time. Let's say it that way. It's it definitely makes a makes an impact so the, on God. So the the voice uh, of well, is it more kind of an impression or is it actually an audible voice that you guys hear? I'm thinking the audible is like on occasion, not always, but it's more kind of yeah. An impression. It, the most common is intuition. Uh, the most common is strong intuition, mm -hmm. and uh, you know and your intuition will get stronger if you listen to it. And uh, when you you know quickly you try to realize if it's God or not, and if it is, then follow it right away and uh, don't delay. Uh, the more you put things off or ignore things of God, then the worse your intuition will get. You know, and of course you also need to study God's Word and meditate on it because He'll speak. Uh, sometimes he speaks, it's called the still small voice, which is like very strong intuition. You actually uh, hear words in your spirit, but they're not like audible words. They're like quiet words. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. But uh, so there, there's the lowest level, which is intuition and uh, and then strong intuition. And then there's these words that come up out of your spirit. And, mm -hmm. uh, and though you could call that, the, I think the Bible calls that the still small voice. And then the next level would be uh, audible voice. And the next level would be like a powerful voice. Yeah. I've had that a few times too. Yeah. And, and usually it's like jump, you know, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like just get out, you know, you're in the wrong place. Move, you know. Move, yeah. <laughs> usually the pop. You know, one, one word. Yeah. Word. That's a, you had that a few times, this? Yeah, usually it's um, to, because you're about to walk into some sort of trouble. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and 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 uh, you know obviously an intuition or a still small voice won't do it so it's literally yeah. uh feels like someone just yelled at you with a blowhorn that's how i mean you know yeah. it, that it yeah, stops you absolutely. in your tracks um, that's right it's, yeah it shakes it shakes your cells, it shakes you <laughs> yeah <laughs> shakes every cell in your body uh it's right down to your dna uh, the the big ones and and, yeah. and and but then there's other ways that God talks too and that that that's a summary of the of the uh, we'll call them you know words of knowledge words of understanding but then He also gives visions and dreams dreams are more common than visions and then there's three kinds of visions uh, a lot of people think a dream is a vision it's well, it is called yeah. visions in the night mm -hmm. so if you want to call that a vision then there's four kinds and uh, the, uh, the so the dream is the most common and then next was is the uh, is the uh, one where you close your eyes and you can clearly see, you know, just like watching a TV or something. You see a person or you see a place or you see something happening or sometimes Jesus is there and, you know, he's telling you something and I've had it where he just tells me one word. I close my eyes and he tells me one one word and, uh, and that's the end of it. I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. else, else, you know, whatever he told me is important, you know. Obviously, I better do it, figure out what he's talking about and do it, you know. And it's usually pretty obvious. If he only tells you one or two words, it's usually pretty obvious what he's talking about. And, uh, uh, you know, so obey. Otherwise, if you don't obey, you're not going to get those kind of things much as much. You know, you get them less and less. you got to really repent and get back in line with God. Yeah. Uh, the second kind of vision, yeah, that's the lowest kind. When you close your eyes, you see something. It may last for five minutes uh, or ten minutes even. But the second kind is when it's called near-death experience or out-of-body experience. It's the same kind of vision. And it really seems like you're dead. It really seems like you leave your body. It really seems like your body's dead. I, I mean, I'd be surprised to learn if it's not dead. I'll just say it that way because it really, 100%, seems like your body's dead. There's no doubt whatsoever that your body's dead. And you get up and, you, you know, you go somewhere. Usually God, usually Jesus is showing up and taking me somewhere up in a cloud, usually, uh, and talks to me. And, uh, you know, and then sometimes he'll show me, you know, future things to come and past things that happen, but usually future. And uh, then he'll tell me to prophesy certain things. Uh, and then... Uh, that's that's the medium kind of vision. Then there's the third kind, or the angels, or Jesus, or whatever shows up right in the room. And you and if there's a bunch of people, humans, maybe two of them or three of them will see it besides you. Maybe there's usually one or two. The Bible says it's two mouth of two witnesses. Let it ever matter be established. Mm -hmm. So the third kind of vision is what's called an open vision, and uh, and he 
we'll talk to you, you know, you know, he could talk to you or it's just something else happened. I'll give you one example of, of hundreds. One time I was ministering at a church and uh, I, I just felt, I was, you know, up talking, animated a little bit and I felt like something was going on behind me and I turned around and uh, there's a bunch of angels like shaft of light on every single chair up in the uh, choir where the choir would normally be. The choir was empty before that, you know, and now all of a sudden there's all these angels and I just stopped. I just stopped. I was shocked. And uh, some lady in the back stands up and says, I see him too. <laughs> and apparently most people couldn't see him. But uh, and I'm just like, I'm just like, we're seeing what they're going to do. You know, I just, I'm just i waiting. You know, I'm praying like, Lord, what, what's what's going on? You know, it's going to, and Lord's like, just just watch, just watch. Just be quiet and watch. You know, so I'm just, I just, uh, I'm just being quiet. And I think everybody sensed that there were angels there. I think, I really do. Uh, and uh, but all, I think only one or two other people saw saw him besides me. Even though there's a whole crowd of people, it's probably you know, 300 people, uh, maybe more, maybe five, no more than that. I'd say 800, maybe a thousand people, maybe a thousand people like that. Anyway, so they the angels start walking. At first, they're like singing. You could almost hear. You could well, you could hear it like a very. Not everybody heard it. I'm sure just me and that lady probably, or maybe one other. But. Um, and then as they're singing, they're singing a nice mellow song like, you know, Hallelujah or something, real mellow, like that. Anyway, they look like shafts of light, but you can see their faces and their wings and everything. And anyway, they start walking out in two rows and about equal number of angels. And I'd say there were 20 angels in each row, maybe 15 angels each row, like that. And they start walking, and there was two stairways on that church. There was two stairways coming down, and the stairways, they walked down the stairways, the stairways lined up with um, with uh, going up the aisles with the aisles basically going up the two aisles and, and they walked right in unison with each other and when they stepped equal with the first row the whole row fell out in the spirit the whole row nobody had to touch them nobody had to pray for them the whole row and then they stepped again and the second row fell out in the spirit and then they stepped again and the third row fell out in the spirit and they stepped again so like a thousand people every single one of them slain the spirit and uh, you know it uh and so I had nothing to do. I just, oh, they, and then when they got to the back, you know, it was one of those auditoriums where you, it's, you're down low, the minister, and then the seats go up higher and higher like that. And when they got in the back, instead of going out the doors, they started walking up in the air, and they went right out through the roof, you know, right just right through the roof, you know. Just, you know, just, uh, and then there was just a few. Everybody knew they were there. There's no doubt about it, and because everybody was slain in the spirit. But I think it was only three people that shared that type of vision with me. And uh, yeah, it had a funny story at the end. There was after about 20 minutes, people started getting some of their strength back, and they started. Get, I didn't. I wasn't. I was slightly weak for sure. That's why I sat down. I was weak in the knees. But me and the other lady in the back were the only two that weren't really seriously slain in the spirit. They, you know, just uh, just weak. You know. And uh, anyway, after about 20 minutes. It's, this one guy is crawling. I see him getting out, you know, going toward the main door is leaving. And, and I thought, well, I'll go minister. And they look kind of like a, you know, like somebody you'd find on the beside the road somewhere, a bum or something, you know. And anyway, I, I, he's trying to get out the glass doors. And, and I, I said, hey, brother, you need you need help. And he says, yeah, he's a, I got to get out of here. He says, I ain't into this stuff. I don't know what's going on here, but I, I'm not. He has a real weak voice. I don't into, into this stuff. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm not into this stuff. I don't know what's going on. Get me out of here. He's like, I got to get to my car. I got to get a cigarette. I gotta... oh, God. <laughs> I, you know, I helped him out the door and I walked with him out the out to the out to his car and trying to minister to him. And he's, oh, yeah. he said, "I'm not coming back here ever again." He says, "My my girlfriend talked me into this, and I'm not coming back." Here. <laughs> uh, anyway, he, he was uh, he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> It was, it was, it had him almost uh, panicked or whatever, you know. It was, it was, it was a funny story. But anyway, uh, yeah. So that's the ways God communicates. There's other ways too, but uh, yeah. you know, he'll, he'll talk sure. an audible voice from heaven. It's happened in the Bible. I, I've never heard an audible voice from heaven. But um, well, I take that back. We had thunder here a couple times that did sound like possibly audible voices. Even the neighbors said that, um, but I couldn't tell. For sure, what they were saying, what he was saying, you know, it was, it definitely sounded like audible voices uh, a couple times, and even the neighbors said, and they, and they, they were, they were, a lot of them were afraid to come up on this mountain because they know that God's up here. <laughs> they're, uh, they're afraid they'll get in trouble, you know, with God. But uh, anyway, so he talks in different ways, uh, you know. But yeah, yeah, God is good. 
Another, Anything else one, you'd like uh, to add? Oh, uh, oh go ahead. Quick. Um, another one, Brother John, is um, uh, in your in your sleep, you'll hear uh, you'll hear them say, "Wake up and pray," and never ignore those, um, mm. because um, typically, um, and and you know, uh, at first, you know, I was all pray for what, you know, and and. <laughs> And and that's when you pray in tongues, because the spirit knows what you're gonna, what you need to pray for. Um, you yourself might not know. You'll find out later, though. You know, uh, within a day or two, you'll find out exactly when you someone will call you and say, "Oh, so and so was in the hospital, and uh, they were, they almost lost, you know, their lives, but um, they, they miraculously pulled out, and it could have been, you know, your prayer, you know." Um, so, but, but you'll hear that and, and you know, that, um, my sheep hear my voice. So, you know, uh, pray right before you go to bed and ask God, I want to hear your voice. I'm your sheep and I want to know and hear your voice and, and pray that right before you go to bed and, and, uh, and he'll come through. So when you when you say you pray, are you getting up out of bed and you're praying, or are no, you? No, yeah. I'm just lying there, <laughs> ready okay, okay. to go to bed, ready to like right before I, you know, really fall asleep. You know, you just say, um, I, "I'm your sheep, and I want to hear your voice." You know. Well, yeah. what, what I mean is like when you're when you're uh, awake and then the spirit tells you to pray, are you getting up out of bed to pray, or are you lying in bed? I'm still in bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I do that too, but I don't get out of bed. I, yeah, what I, I do is I, I get, I just go, just fall off the bed and put my knees on it. I have a little mat on my side of the bed. So it's not a hard floor. It's, it's a mat. And so I kneel on that mat. I just go from laying to kneeling without standing up. So I don't get up. I just get, I just get down. Instead of getting up, I get down. <laughs> Uh, I don't, because yeah, if yeah. I do that, I might, like, kneel on a dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I have kneeled on a dog a few times. I have kneeled on a cat or a dog a few yeah, times. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, part of the fun, yeah, yeah. I think the kneeling part is, uh, for me anyway, it's 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 pretty powerful, um, just humbling yourself before the Lord. Um, what deters me from doing that a lot of times, like over the winter, like it's still cold in the house. I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll just lay there and pray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand. I totally understand that. Yeah. God is good. I, hey, uh, let's see. There's some comments here in the chat. Hi, everyone from Noy and sister, uh, sister, uh, Brother, excuse me, sister, I'm trying to find this name here. Uh, yeah, I don't see it right now. But anyway, Golden Healer, hi, everyone. Thank you. And uh, yeah, hi, everyone to chat for me. And Regina uh, Hightower, uh, yeah, she's the one to ask where to find the, the first video. So it's the first video. So, uh, and she'll probably number them or something a little bit. Sister Maria will help us out with numbering them or, or something like that a little bit. Uh, Decentralized real estate. Okay, we got that one. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, again, I won't name everybody because we got a lot of people, but it's good to have uh, all you guys in the chat. Um, here's an, here's one. Did we cover this one? Hi, Tower, Sister Regina. I had heard that the Ozarks are formed differently, and that's why a bunch of military chose the Ozarks to retire. I know Ark Haven is up there. I believe John Moore is the guy that speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. So maybe Ark Haven is another community. Is is that what you you're getting out of that? So you guys, so. I, I, brother John, I can comment to that. By the way, Go ahead. so Ark Haven, Ark Haven was. Uh, I actually contacted the gentleman that started that, but he's now 87 years old, and he apparently is not doing well physically. So he is in therapy. Another gentleman, actually, a couple bought the property. Um, and it's kind of like we were looking at before we have a plot, you buy the plot and then you have to develop it yourself. Um, so I, I would imagine you can still contact them, but then you, you, what they're looking for is somebody that has the money to buy the property and to develop it. If you don't have the money, yeah. they're not going to the time Yeah, again. no, development is too late to develop anything. I mean, if you want to build something, yeah, if you get busy right away, maybe you can get it done. Uh, some people build faster than others, and yeah. Anyway, yeah. So good. Thank you for commenting on that, uh, 
brother Dr. John. Uh, we have John, uh, excuse me, Rick Flick says, sounds like Monopoly, <laughs> yes. And uh, that's what they're, you know, it's funny. Uh, it's, uh, uh, there's this one brother, I won't say his name because he's not, I don't think he's really a brother, but he's, he's definitely a questionable character, but he runs a big prophecy club. And uh, every time there's any problem, he thinks it's a great time to raise a lot of money. And, and, and words, these, these people, instead of wanting to help the people that are suffering, he's it, like he's got to use this for a, a fundraiser, you know. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's some of these people, uh, you're, they're going to they're gonna wind up in hell one day and they wonder why, maybe. You know, so, anyway, Brother Rick also says we're, we'll be living off the grid or we are living off the grid with like-minded people. Uh, raising cows, chickens, and forest food. So now that's a really good idea. If, if, you know, you can raise food in the forest uh, if you know how, and and it's called gorilla uh, gardening. We had a brother come on our program about a year ago, maybe two years ago, that talked about that, and he does that. And he doesn't know anything, but he does gardens all over the place, and, and in the deepest recesses of the forest where he lives, he, he goes out and plants gardens and. Uh, he goes out and harvests them. He goes out and weeds them and stuff like this. So it's called gorilla gardening. Uh, yeah, so you could probably do that with chickens and cows, too. If you might need a little land for cows, but uh, they do respond well to having a rope. You don't always have to have a fence for your cows. Uh, well, but you do have to move them three times a day uh, if you have them on a rope uh, at least twice a day. Uh, okay, so thanks, Brother Rick, for that information. That's Rick's Flicks. And... Uh, let's see. Sister Maria, do you see anything else we should cover? No, I think we made it through. Um, okay, good, I good. I don't see anything else. Well, anybody else wants to call in, you're welcome to. And Brother John, if you have any, Dr. John, if you have anything else you'd like to add, go right ahead. No, I, yeah, I just had those questions about, the, you know, getting closer to, um, to the Father and to Jesus and listen to his voice. That's, I think it's going to be Amen. really important to have that. Um, I have taught. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, and, and I have a full-time job and it's kind of a challenge because I, obviously I'm distractible with work and, and all that. And uh, yeah. it's, today I had off and it was wonderful, but um, you know, I'm distracted by other things as well because I live here on a, on a farm. But uh, yeah. yeah, so um, Sister Maria, I know Dr. T, you're a missionary, but Sister Maria, do you have a full-time job? Yes, I do. Wow. Um, She's probably working more than full time. Uh, how many hours a week, Sister Maria? All your <laughs> other duties, not counting. With all my not counting duties. wits. So I do uh, our operational technology cybersecurity. That's my profession. Wow. Yeah. How many hours a week, sis? Not counting what uh, you do for wits. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> 48 or something, you know, I'll okay. read emails on Sundays to get ready for Mondays and, you know, things like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking maybe, maybe all your time when you're not, when you're, except yeah, for when yeah. you're helping with or, or not yeah, sleeping. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, try to, I try to do a good work-life balance. I really do. I make an effort good, good. Uh, to do that. Um, I've always yes. been uh, gifted where I can, um, I work quickly, you know, uh, it takes more, most people, I don't know, days I can typically do in a few hours. <laughs> so, yeah, let's put the number. Yeah. yeah. Let's put the number on the screen and sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, sis. That's uh, all right. you know, yeah. definitely yeah. keep, you know, talking, but let's put the number on the screen in case somebody doesn't know the number to call in and we can take more calls. Um, I see one here. Did you get to finish? I didn't mean to interrupt you, sis. Did no, you want no, to I'm say? Done. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Sorry, I can't always tell because there's a bit of a delay, not a lot, but a little bit of a delay. And sometimes I think people stop talking and it's, you know, and I'm ready to say something. But yeah, so sorry about that, both of you guys uh, and the audience, too. I don't mean to talk over anybody, uh, but it does happen, especially when you're this far away from each other. You know, we're half the world apart. It's amazing. It works as good as it does, honestly, considering how far. And we actually had a, a, a bumpy ride. Sister Maria and I were testing before we came alive. And it was bad. It was very bad. Yeah. And we pray. I prayed. I don't know if you did. Did you say pray also, Sister Mary? Yeah, I just said, God, please help me. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. My computer would <laughs> it wouldn't be it would not boot. It, you know, I yeah, had to we do thought like we a were... really hard boot. 
you know, we thought we were getting some kind of attack. We couldn't even hear each other on Skype. And, uh, yeah, we thought we were getting some, you know, I, I took authority over that thing, commanded it to go. Uh, and, and now it's working pretty good through the show, so I'm, I'm happy. But Brother Dylan says, um, says, what happens to the people who have never heard the gospel? My friends keep asking me this, and I don't know the answer either. I think everyone's heard the gospel, brother. Um, if they haven't, you better tell them. That's, it's that simple. It's, uh, tell them now's the time to get right with God because the end is here. Uh, yeah, they've, they've got a short time left. Uh, yeah, do you think there's very many people who have not heard the gospel, Sister Maria? Um, there's actually a lot. So, really? you know, uh, yeah, uh, even here in the United States, um, my uh, cousin came to visit me. Um, he's my first cousin's son. So I don't know what that makes him like a first cousin once removed or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> he, I think nephew. So, but anyway, what yeah, you no, no, he's not a nephew. A nephew has to be <laughs> a um, is the son uh, of a sibling. So he's well, just, act, actually um, not, you know, uh, the son of a sibling. He's a he's a son of an uncle. So that yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, anyway, so anyway, an off subject. Um, and uh, he came this weekend and got saved uh, to visit wow. me to look at colleges Glory and things. And uh, never had I gave him his first Bible. He's never read the Bible, and uh, he's he's on his way. So. Yeah, you know, he's 20 years old. He'll be 21 in three months. So um, a young man who uh, has never uh, heard uh, anything out of the New Testament. So, yeah. yeah. And I got introduced to him, and I had the opportunity to blow his mind. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you think I blew his mind? Yeah, 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 because he didn't, he didn't know. You know, I had to keep saying, okay, okay, this is what that is, you know because he, he hadn't read the Bible. I mean, I just handed it to him probably right. uh, a few hours before you talked to him. So, um, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that there are people that haven't heard the gospel. So I guess, uh, you know, get busy and teach the gospel because when the 6,000 years is up, it's up. People think it, Jesus is coming back after the word is preached to everybody. Uh, I don't really think that, you know, again, a lot of people don't want to hear the word. You know, they know it's being preached on the corner or on the TV or on the YouTube, but they don't want to look at it. It's all, you know, it's up to them to reject it. When the 6,000 years is up, it's up. God goes by the 6,000 years. It's not going by when everybody hears it. Uh, and, and there are scriptures that make it think, you know, it says the good news will be preached in all the earth for witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Uh or maybe it says all the peoples uh, instead of nations. It depends on your translation, I guess. But uh, and then the end will come. But so people get the idea that every single person has to hear the gospel first. I don't think that's correct. Uh, well, you think about it. You know, one-year-olds, two-year-olds, they don't understand. Even if they heard it, they wouldn't know what it meant. You know, it's, you know, it's uh, you know, there are people that uh, not everybody's going to hear it. Let's say it that way. But uh, the six thousand years is up. Six thousand years is up, and I'm guaranteeing it's up late twenty-seven or late 28, one of those, and uh, the Raptors late 27, I guarantee it, and uh, yeah, the rescue. Um, so it's very clear in the Bible, and I can go through it again. You know, I go through, I went through it last week. Watch the program last week, if you don't, uh, or the week before, or look at this timeline at the bottom of the screen here. It's uh, You can study that. It's on our page called mm -hmm. Countdown, wits.ws forward slash countdown. You have a, a thought for the Dr. John? Uh, no, no, no. I, I was just nodding. Okay, when you cleared your throat, I thought maybe you're uh, going to say something, but okay, it's all right. It's no problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, if they die without hearing the gospel, he's asking that question, you know, what happens? Uh, do either you, brother or sister, want to tackle that? If someone mm -hmm. dies in the next few years, which is highly likely, uh, a lot of people are going to die, uh, then, and they haven't really heard the gospel, what, what's, what happens to them? Well, Either you two want to talk about that? I know, according to scripture, it uh, clearly says that man is appointed to die once, and then, and then judgment, right? So, um, if for some reason they haven't heard the gospel, I think they they go under judgment because there's also scripture that says um, everything declares the glory of the Lord, right? And mm. and and um, so just by 
walking in nature, you should know. And I can't remember what scripture, maybe somebody in the um, sister uh, Jerry or Mary can, um, where, where he, uh, I believe it's a, Apostle Paul declares that, um, you know, uh, we should know, we should know, everyone should know just based on everything around us that there is a God, right? Yeah, um, amen. I, I'd say God is fair, so he'll look at the yeah. whole life, you know, yeah. he'll look at their whole life, you know, he, he's fair, so God is not unfair, you know, so yeah, so people that die in their sin, you know, it'd be great if they would have came to Jesus first, but uh you know, God will work it all out. I'm not worried about it. It's not my job. It's his job. Yeah, it's and his if job. he tells me that's my job, if after we get the new body, he might tell me, hey, this is your job. And I'll say, okay, I'll try. I'll do my best, you know, and I'll learn to like it, you know. But uh, yeah. anyway, for now, it's his job. And if he gives it to me, then that's okay, too. I hope he don't, but he might, you know. So he'll, you know, figure out these people that are, you know, that really haven't, you know, hurt or they haven't paid attention. Uh, you know, and of course, the young ones are all saved. Everybody pretty yeah. much agrees on that. Everybody under five or three or whatever, somewhere in there. Some people say yeah. 10. But anyway, at some point in there, and, and I think it varies a little bit from one child to the other. Uh, also, you know, it depends on how mentally mature and emotionally mature they are and spiritually mature. So, yeah. So, yeah. you know, but, and, but God will take care of it. God will work it all out. Yeah, he's the judge. Yeah. And, and, uh, we have a Mary's. caller. Oh, okay. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I, well, so, uh, let me just do these two scriptures that Sister Mary posted. Okay. So the heavens okay. declare the glory of the Lord. And God looks on the heart of a man. So, yeah, those, those Amen. are the two things. Yep. Excellent, excellent. Okay, thank you for joining us, uh, brother, sister. Tell us your name. Hey, Dr. T. Uh, my name is Kelly, brother Kelly. Kelly, brother Kelly. Uh, yeah, we talked before, didn't we? Yes, sir. We talked a while ago. Yeah, uh, well, welcome back to the... Welcome back to the program. Uh, welcome to the program. Yeah, you're live. Uh, go ahead. What, what do you want to share, Brother Kelly? Awesome. I just wanted to share that I started the uh, all carnivore diet as best as I could, as being like college and all, um, doing the army. Um, and almost all my inflammation in my legs has gone away. Excellent. Insane because. It was, it was debilitating. It was really, like, really, yeah. really bad. Yeah, they wanted to do an operation on your legs, right? Are you the brother that they wanted to do an operation? Yeah. Honestly, it was just still a problem. Like, uh, the information is pretty much gone. But over the weekend, I had a, a field training, and I had to, like, you know, I, I went on a field training, and I was on a carnival ride. I brought a bunch of beef jerky with me. But uh, they don't really let you sleep at all during those trainings. So I had to uh, down some... Um, MREs and trash and poison and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I might have, like, I don't know, losing a lot of rucking, but I hurt my calf, like, again. Yeah. But there's no information. So I was just wondering what you, what you suggest for that. Should I do, like, I, I would suggest you quit doing the strenuous stuff for a while till your body heals. And I know you're required because you're in the military, but if you can get a doctor slip, uh, you know, I yeah, I do your best to get a doctor to sleep. If you get, uh, you know, there are doctors that will help you out with that. Uh, you just have to keep asking until you find one. And and Dr. John might have some thoughts too. But uh, uh, that's my suggestion: is is keep doing carnivore as best you can for 30 days and or 60 days even, and uh, and take it easy on those on the parts that are healing, so they can heal. If you overdo it, then they won't heal right, and you have problems again. Uh, you have any additional thoughts, Dr. John? So, uh, if I heard correctly, he has inflammation in different parts of his body? Yeah, it's the calves mainly, legs and calves. So, what, right. I've, what I've found that helps with uh, inflammation is actually, this is kind of a short-term thing, not something you necessarily want to depend on, is actually take baking soda and put it in your yeah. water and drink it because it's, it's going to alkalize you, uh, so that's going to be really helpful. Yeah, but baking soda what, helps, yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, doing the, the carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah. And so I'd say just try to find a doctor to write you a slip so you can be excused from, from you know, your military training for a while on the basis of your leg. Uh, just ask a few of them until you find one. Um, yeah, there should be some. And, and the carnivore doctors on YouTube might, you know, Dr. Barry, he's a pretty compassionate kind of guy. Anybody that realizes that your body needs to heal, it will, uh, will would help you out with that. Uh, so that's my best recommendation. Does that make sense, Brother Kelly? Yeah, that makes sense. 
Uh, I'm just trying to, I don't know, there's no thing to do, like, they take a toll on my soul, I feel like. That's right. I would fall away from God a little bit. Yeah. I'd get out of there. If I'd get out of there, if I was you, I wouldn't even be in it. I I wouldn't be in it. There's no way. But uh, it's up to you, of course. It's your decision. But, yeah, it definitely pulls you away from God. Uh, Any, anything like that, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's all about, you know, it's all about guns and killing and shooting people and, you know, just crazy stuff like that. That uh, you know, Jesus said those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So, uh, you know, that's what's coming. If the soldiers of the world, especially the United States, are going to get wiped out. That's uh, that's coming. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So it's not the best place to be. So you have to decide and, and you know pray about it, and God will help you. Yeah. Well, I want to be uh, I want to be a medevac pilot for the uh, for the army. So that's my dream, but I will see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If God puts a dream in your heart, then it's okay. You know, pursue it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, you got to be careful. So I'm glad you're having positive results. Uh, and then, of course, it sounds like you overdid it and, and it wasn't fully healed yet. See, what happens in carnivore is it feels like it's healed right away because you don't have the pain and so on. But it really takes 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, depending on how serious the issue is to heal up. You just don't, you just don't suffer the pain while it's healing. And so you really got to stay as strict as you can for for 90 days and then you then you're then test it out and see how well you are but especially if you're used to sleep and you shouldn't go without sleep that's important for healing um, your body does most of its healing while you're sleeping uh, unless god leads you otherwise you know so all right anything all right. else yeah, that, that's, that's about it. thank you maria thank you uh dr john thank you dr steve uh for waking me up <laughs> you're welcome and, uh, yeah, yeah, some report, uh, you're welcome. Spread the word. There's a lot of people that need to know this kind of stuff and where they can find uh, good information. God bless you, brother. God bless. God bless you too. Bye-bye. All right. That's our brother, Kelly. Uh, he's he's growing. He's learning. He's getting better. He's getting healthier. Um, he was they he was pretty laid up. And you think being laid up like that would be really easy to get a doctor slip, but you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe they won't complete his training. He won't be able to reach his goal or who knows. But he has to figure it all out with the Lord's help. He can pray and seek the Lord, and the Lord will guide him. And um, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 interesting, you know. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. So at least he's gotten relief uh, until he overdid it. There he got he got relief from his issues. Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I once had a uh, there's a serious tropical infection that you get from water just by jumping in water. And uh, it swallowed my whole body. This is like uh, six months ago, maybe five months ago, maybe four months ago, somewhere in there. And uh, which isn't days. It felt like it was killing me. And I sought the Lord. And uh, he didn't do a miracle. Instead, he said, uh, fast 10 days and then go carnivore. That's exactly what he said in, in my spirit. And, uh, and I mean, I, I, it was a still small voice. The words came up. Yeah, let's say it that way. And, uh, and so I fasted. Uh, I didn't make it 10 days. I think I made it eight or nine. I forget. And then I did a small meal of carnivore per day for about another eight or nine. And I was completely well in probably three, in probably four days, you know, when I started fasting. I mean, but again, God said 10 days. I really should have did 10 days, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I was close. You know, so God is merciful. Thank God. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, he, he's, yeah, he's. You know, even going a, one small meal a day on carnivore is pretty tough. I'd say it's tougher than fasting, honestly. But uh, so I did sort of fast uh, the whole 10 days and actually more than that. But uh, anyway, God is good. God is good. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else you'd like to add, Brother John, Dr. John? No, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Sister Maria? No, I'm good. I'm good. It's all right. Well, great some great show. scriptures, and, and thank you, Sister Mary, uh, for sending those in, and uh, Sister Jerry also. She has one here, God, God looks on the heart of man. Yeah, that's right. That's a, Did you already quote that one, Sister Maria? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, okay, I had okay. actually put the reference, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 And his, another one here says from Sister Mary Jordan, his wrath is ever slow to rise and ready to abate or ready to forgive. In other words, are ready to. Yeah. Yeah. If people will repent, you know, those who haven't heard, they need to repent right now and start hearing. <laughs> so it's that simple, really. 
uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like saying all oh, the alarms going off everywhere. The alarms are going off everywhere, <laughs> and they haven't heard. I mean, what's going on? You know, uh, it's time to listen. You know, it's time to take heed and uh, realize that God is our refuge and our strength. Yeah. And you know, it's it's okay to have a gun, and I, it helps. You know, I, I notice here. Once they realized I had a gun, I put a few bullet holes and things, and I put up a sign or two that said, we have guns here, get, you know, keep out, and this type of thing. The thieving went way down. We got dogs, too, about the same time. The thieving went way out, way down, way down. Uh, so, you know, so, you know, it's good protection. Because it's a, a, a home invasion of thieving, you know, in other words, just thieves breaking in, or let's say they're in your house and you walk in on them. Yeah, you might get shot. Whereas if you ha if they know you have a gun, they might not even come here. They might go rob the neighbor or something, you know. Uh, so uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to have one and let people know you have one. And uh, in my opinion, ah, I got a problem here. So you guys will have to wing it for a second. I'll, I'll, <laughs> you can wrap it up if you want. Whatever you want to do with Sister Maria. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Brother John, thank you so much for uh, joining, and I, I think and I thank everyone. For uh, got on today and um, you know we can praise God that um, it was a very une une uneventful uh, 2024 uh, eclipse so but we still need to repent um, and um, sometimes I feel though um, that we're living in the book of Jeremiah where Jeremiah is out there going repent repent you know <laughs> <and the> people <laughs> completely ignore it so um i always um uh sort of uh go to god with these words with uh, i believe it's uh second chronicles seven fourteen. it doesn't say all the people it says if my people right if my people not all the people so if my people humble themselves so he's talking about his people um, those who believe in his son Jesus Christ and there's a lot of people who believe in Jesus but they don't humble themselves before the Lord and and really that's what we need we need that right now more than more than ever so um, well, to add to that I would uh, this is definitely a challenge for me and that is um, another scripture that says uh, to deny your, deny yourself right mm -hmm. daily so that kind of goes hand in hand with the humble yourself, right? Deny yourself and think about it with, with the, the way our society is, it's what they want. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a selfish ego centric lifestyle. And that's what we have to battle against because if we want, if do we, if we want to be closer to him, we have to deny ourselves, not yeah. seek what we want, but seek what he wants. Exactly. And we got to pick up our cross, right? Yep, and that's the other thing, and that's it, daily as well. Yeah, daily, and, and the other one is, and work out our own salvation, right? Uh, it doesn't say that God is going to work it out for you. It actually says, and right. work out your own salvation. So right. We have to do work, and right. a lot of people aren't re don't want to do that. So, um, But he only needs a remnant, and here we are. So I thank God for all of you. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to sign off. Uh, may everyone have a glorious week, and we'll see you on Friday. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.